All right, welcome everyone. Tonight's program features pickling and I'll be introducing our presenter in just a few moments. This program is inspired by the For the Greatest Number, the New Deal Revisited exhibition, which is currently open at Parkway Central, Free Library of Philadelphia on the third floor during our open hours, Monday through Friday, nine to five. It's a phenomenal exhibit that was curated by Laura Struffolino and Caitlin Goodman. We actually have one of the curators here in the audience tonight. So Laura, welcome. And it's a really phenomenal look at New Deal era projects with a particular focus on the work and workers that um, really made Philadelphia um, arts and culture really flourish during that time. And that there's a really phenomenal amount of material available online as well if you go to freelibrary.org backslash exhibitions or uh, for the greatest number if you do a search for for the greatest number on the free library website you'll find out more information including uh, a podcast that we have we have a music playlist and of course we have virtual programs such as the one tonight and we have in-person programs as well at Parkway Central and at our neighborhood library. So again, tonight's program, we're so excited to have everyone here, is inspired by For the Greatest Number, The New Deal Revisited, and the materials that are showcased at this exhibit, which can be seen at Parkway Central at the third floor Dietrich Gallery, feature materials from our special collections as well as our research departments, and it's a phenomenal look at the work and workers of this time period and with a particular Philadelphia focus. If you go to freelibrary.org backslash exhibitions, you can learn more, you can engage with our online materials specific to this exhibition and others, and you can also learn more about virtual and in-person programs like this one. I want to take a minute to introduce tonight's presenter, Ms. Shayla Felton Dorsey. We have known each other since 2017. Um, Shayla is an amazing community member, library patron, mentor, chef, um, and has just done phenomenal work. She was part of our first community food educator uh, cohort at the Free Library of Philadelphia and really just brings a tremendous amount of heart and soul along with just phenomenal knowledge and curiosity to the ways that food and cooking and culture all intersect. And so it was a real honor to prepare, prepare for this event with her. Um, and there's some really interesting tie-ins that she has to this time period and to her own family connections to, to this era. So we're really excited to have you, Shayla. I'm going to go ahead and um, turn the mic over to you and also drop in the chat the link for exhibitions so folks can sort of see what this exhibition looks like. Um, and then I'll also go ahead and drop in the chat the recipe, which includes um, ingredients and the materials list. Everyone that signed up for this program in advance should have received that material. So go ahead and check your inbox to see if that's there. But in case you can't find it quickly, I'm going to go ahead and drop it in the chat. Um, and we are going to also use the chat function for any questions that uh, participants may have. We have a dedicated Q&A period at the end of the event, but along the way, if you have questions that you'd like to ask Shayla and she's able to answer them in real time, we can do that as well. I may be off camera because I'll be sort of facilitating all of that back end stuff, um, but we're here and we're excited to have you and we look forward to learning from Shayla. Take it away. Well, thank you everyone. Good evening. I appreciate everyone for joining us tonight. So I'm excited because this program, which is part of the New Era deal, it kicks off tonight. So welcome. This program, well, this class, this recipe that I'm going to share tonight is inspired by my Nana, who just turned 84 years old. Um, every Sunday we have long conversations about cooking, living, family, culture, Southern heritage. And a lot of her recipes are just her telling me over the phone and I'm trying to transcribe them or adding a little razzle dazzle 
of spice and ingredients that I would like to add to make them truly my own. The New Deal era um, was curated or was created by the government um, in the 1930s because it was um, high levels of unemployment, agriculture, overpopulation. But again, my grandmother has always instilled the use of sharing your abundance with the community. So upon talking to Susanna several months ago, when I was hearing the culinary connection of community and resources and sharing, I knew that I wanted to somehow be a part of any program. My goal tonight is just to share the interconnection that food brings and talk about how all different ethnicities and cultures either can jar or preserve food. But most of all, I want to share stories about resilience and preservation and navigating through challenging economical hardships. <clears throat> again, I thank you once again for joining to me tonight. So I'm gonna show you some of my harvest. I was able to visit the lovely Sankofa farm in Southwest Philadelphia. And I was gifted some beautiful red lion, burgundy red okra. And these are white queen, sweet peppers. I have a red onion, some fresh rosemary, and some thyme. And these are mixed mustard greens. <clears throat> and of course, cucumber. So I'm gonna just review some of the equipment we're gonna need tonight. Going to be utilizing a wooden spoon, a liquid measuring cup, a chef's knife, a cutting board, a funnel. I have a 16 ounce mason jar and a lid. We have a small sauce pot and lid. Just in case you don't have a chef's knife, a paring knife will do as well, along with kitchen shears. Some spices I'll be utilizing tonight. We'll be talking about seasoning your brine with the use of bay leaves. This is a mixture of curry and turmeric, kosher salt, granulated sugar, even ginger, garlic cloves, cinnamon stick. This is a blend of coriander and cumin and peppercorn. And just to add a little spice to your life, some chili flakes. And I do have some alternatives I would like to show just in case you may not have those on hand. I would love to make this accessible to everyone. Granulated onion powder and garlic and dried herbs of your choice. This is just an Italian blend for that nice umami flavor. A little smoked paprika or regular paprika will do. Hopefully you have fun with this recipe and you flavor it to your palate. So I like spice and I'm gonna show you um, a few jars that I was able to pickle beforehand. 
So these are my okras. I have some of the fresh thyme, peppercorn, and some red chili flakes for a little bit of heat. I have some of the cucumber and the dried Italian herbs and just some black peppercorn in here. And I added a little turmeric. When you buy standard commercial pill, um, pickles, they kind of have that more yellow distinct color. Uh, turmeric will naturally give it that nice golden hue. And then I decided to slice and de-seed my sweet peppers. I added some of the fresh rosemary. And again, the same components for the brine base. And there's some fresh garlic in there as well. Just to give you a visual. So I'm going to start with the brine. I'm going to gather the liquid measuring cup and our wooden spoon. I'm gonna grab the vinegar and the salt and the sugar. And by the use of technology and my tripod, I'm gonna bring you guys over to my stove. And I'll walk you through the brine recipe. Okay, give me one moment. Turn my camera around. All right. So first, I'm going to add my one cup of water. My stove is on. And then I'm going to add one cup of my white vinegar. Followed by one tablespoon of the granulated sugar. That was the vinegar. Here goes my salt. Sugar. I'm gonna let this come to a gentle boil just until the salt and the sugar starts to dissolve. If anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. I'm starting to see movement. So I'm just stirring up the salt. And the sugar. So probably in one to two minutes, I'll be able to turn off the heat. I'm thinking of pickling some sliced red onion, some of the fresh herbs, and the mustard greens. Perfect. I don't see any of the salt or sugar at the bottom, turning off the heat. And let's walk back over to the cutting board. Now is a great time if you're prepping your vegetables. If you're utilizing okras, you can use a dry towel or paper towel. After you give your okras a rinse, you just wanna gently wipe them up and down vigorously to remove the fuzz. If you're utilizing any pepper, I could just show you on the board how we're going to slice them down. Just grab my knife. You could utilize your fingers or you could take the back of a spoon and just swipe the seeds out just like this. 
And when we pack them into the jar, I'll show you how to pack them nice and tight. My greens are already washed, my mustard greens. And the interconnection of pickled mustard greens, very similar to kimchi or chow chow. Uh, in Asian cuisine, they actually pickle the whole mustard green. So they would just remove, I would say, less than a half an inch of the stem. And now that they're nicely washed and dried, they would pack them into the jar and pull, pour the brine over. So I'm gonna actually do a melody. I'm going to not utilize the stem. I'm gonna actually save these for probably some form of soup. We're gonna devein them. Just like you would do um, palette greens. And we're gonna roll them up. French technique. Chiffonade. And we're gonna ribbon cut them. Roll them nice and tight. Tuck in your fingers and your nail, like an arch-like position. And that seesaw motion and these beautiful ribbons. I'm going to grab my jar and just drop them in. I'm gonna add in some of the sweet peppers as well. And I think I'm gonna layer them. So I'm just gonna repeat. An alternate mustard green. Sweet peppers. And add in some red onion as well. And just some fun tips of how you can enjoy your pickled vegetables. They go great on a cheese board, a sandwich, burgers, meat, and plant-based. You can add them to soups as well, or just have them as a side dish. And again, feel free to add as much or as less as you would like. I am making sure to pack the jar, space fillers. So when I add the brine, we won't have any floaties to the top. Even if you do, you could just give your jar a gentle shake. And I think these will make wonderful gifts if anyone is having any type of birthday, housewarming. And I'm gonna actually use the ends and ramps and quarters of the vegetables. You can freeze them for stock. Make your own vegetable broth or soup base. Okay, I'm gonna add some of the fresh thyme in there as well. And we're actually gonna do the red and the yellow pepper as well.
please feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Shayla, I'm going to go ahead and just read out a couple of our questions that have been popping up. Um, yes, yes. We have we have a question from your experience, are there any combinations of vegetables to avoid? And then I actually have a follow up question after that. Any combination of vegetables to avoid? Um, I would say don't add any vegetables you don't like. But um, mainly with using like CSA boxes or farmer's market or just grocery hauls, I like to use what's in season. Um, I would tend to stay away from, oh, this is beautiful. Just to show you how everything looks. And I'm gonna let this cool for about 30 minutes before I just pop that in the refrigerator. I'm gonna give this a gentle shake. Thank you so much. That looks so beautiful. I love that color combination. And I was wondering, could you differentiate for us between canned items and sort of like the fridge pickle that you just made? So like the canned items being something that would be more shelf stable that you could keep in your pantry versus the fridge pickle. Okay, so the quick this quick pickle is just a cup of vinegar, a cup of water, a tablespoon of salt and sugar. My understanding when it comes to the canning or jarring, it's more voluminous and it's for obviously a longer shelf life. So at this time, I'm thinking it's more of a, well, I'm just always mindful of, we know the vinegar is gonna break everything down. It's actually good bacteria. I just don't wanna go past a certain time point. So I think it just has to do with time as well, time, ingredients, and acidity. Thank you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, for those of you that are interested in making canned items that are more shelf stable, it's it's a it is a little bit of a different process. But what I like about this is that um, right. it's like boiling the can, water, sealing the jars. Yeah, and you can just make a combination that you like, and then keep a mixture like this in your fridge for a couple of weeks. And honestly, in many households, it won't even last a couple of weeks. It'll last a day or a couple of days because they're just so delicious and so beautiful and like Shayla's saying a representation of the bounty that exists in any particular season. I'm going to right. jump back into the chat to see if anyone else has questions. Right. All right, so I'm going to actually We have time for, um, oh, we could actually make the, the pickling spice blend. Upon doing a lot of research for this class, I was seeing how there was a lot of pre-made spice blends. So I have my mise en place and I have my red pepper flakes. Um, I have some turmeric and curry. This actually can be substituted for mustard seeds. I have my bay leaf. I have a cinnamon stick. Black peppercorns, coriander, and cumin. I actually have some fresh garlic and ginger. And we're going to actually do our own blend tonight. So this is, hold on. I should just grab my turmeric. So turmeric, I'm gonna do two tablespoons. Give me one minute. Gonna use this whole cinnamon stick. I'm gonna break it in half. The bay leaf, I'm gonna crumple, break it up. I have my coriander, my black pepper. 
little chili flakes. I have fresh ginger there, but I actually have some granulated ginger. I'm gonna just utilize that and I'm gonna use a teaspoon of that. Oh, maybe a half a teaspoon. Yeah. Oh, that smells wonderful. So again, this is, I'm gonna put the lid on. Give this a little stir. And for my next brine, I think I'm gonna use the rest of my okras. I could use this and with the brine base. And again, as always, if you wanted to Use a separate spoon, just give it a little taste and make sure that it's to your flavor palette. You can add more spice, take it away. Again, do we have any more questions before I move on to our pickled okra? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but if anyone else wants to chime in, we did get a lovely comment. Um, Jamie is looking forward to pickling sweet grape, tomatoes, onion, and garlic. Doesn't that sound great? Yummy. That actually would go well with the rosemary and sweet peppers. That sounds yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the stove and repeat our brine. I'm just gathering my wooden spoon and my liquid measuring cup. My salt, my pepper, and my sugar. And again, I was able to find all these vegetables at Sankofa Community Farm, which was awesome. Not all of them, but they provided the okra and the thyme. And everything else was farmer's market, your local grocery store. Try to use everything in season so it's accessible to all. Again. So that was the sugar, the salt, one cup of vinegar, one cup of water. We're stirring. It's on high heat because I wanna dissolve the salt and the sugar. And when it comes to the okras, I kept them whole and I'm going to pair them vertical, stem up, stem down. And I'm gonna pack the, the jar nice and tight. Oh, curry would pair well too, so those leaflets. curry, turmeric. I'm going to add a little black pepper. I'm looking forward to having some of those pickled okra over a nice leafy salad. And I actually have some, an ancient grain called fonia. It's West African. It's the seed of the universe. I'm actually excited to play around and create dishes with that. So now that I see the bubbles formulating, I don't see any granules of salt and sugar. Turn off my stove. All right. Okay. 
Let me grab one more jar. Hopefully this will give everyone inspiration. And while you're getting that, I just wanted to read out loud. Um, we have Asha who's saying that she's going, they're going to add curry leaflets to pickled onions, garlic, Thai peppers, along with turmeric, coriander, and cumin seeds. So it really, you know, all of these beautiful flavor profiles, you get to play around with the kinds of tastes that really appeal to you and also the kind of tie-ins that go well with the different seasonal vegetables or fruits that you'll be canning. Um, and it can really match other flavor profiles that you're interested in or that feel like home or that connect you to your family or community. Absolutely. And being connected to community and family, I'm actually looking forward to making some gumbo, a nice dish when the weather is nice and cool. And you could definitely have more than enough abundance to share. So I'm trying to get like sizes together and pairing them around the rim or the edge and any irregular sizes. A little tip is really good to kind of use, oh, this is pretty, this is the red thing. So if you have to lay them bilateral, feel free to do that as well. Little filler, space fillers. It's sort of like a game of Tetris at this point, and I'll be sure to show my packing. And again, just be gentle with the, the okra. I know some people don't like the mucus inside. So here we go. So in goes my spices. And as time, I would say about probably by tomorrow, the day after, they will have this nice vibrant color. and flavor. So I'm actually going to grab a spoon and just give them a little slight push down. And then I have a little of the brine left over. And we're going right to the top. And Shayla, we have another question whenever you're ready for it. Um, we're curious about the difference between pickling and fermenting. Hmm, fermenting. Um, fermenting, as far as I know what fermenting, I'm, I'm not, well, a lot of the fermenting I see like when it comes to kimchi, um, I know it's left out for like a time period of time. I'm not sure on the actual minutes and hours and stuff like that, but I always see a lot of cabbage and like peppers and it's more of a, like a spicy profile. And it's definitely a less of a brine. It's broken down with a very, I think it's more like a reduced volume versus like when it comes to pickling, it's obviously less acidic salt and sugar and it's submerged. I may have to do a little bit more research and actually get back, but that's a great question. Yeah, and I'm happy to just add additional information. And we actually have amazing 
materials at the library. A lot of the neighborhood libraries have cookbooks and then at Parkway Central, and these are materials that can circulate throughout the neighborhood libraries as well. We have a huge cook collection that really gets at some of this nuance, like how to ferment versus pickle. So pickling often uses the kinds of ingredients that Shayla is using today with uh, vinegar and salt being, you know, part of the right. equation. And then with mm -hmm. fermenting, it's a different process that does not involve any kind of vinegar. Um, there's no added acid to fermenting, um, but mm -hmm. it's still, you often end up with food that has a sort of similar sour taste. Um, and there can also be some nutritional differences between the two different processes. But I would say if you go to freelibrary.org, and just take a gander at our cookbook collection. There is tremendous amount of resources there and you can reserve any of the titles and have them available for pickup at a location that's convenient to you. Um, and again, when we're talking about this time period of the 1930s, this is a time when people are really trying to do a lot with a little. And so the idea of being able to take a bountiful harvest like, you know, okra, cabbage, all of this, there were people that were using the fermentation method and then also people that were using this quick pickle method. And they were both ways of putting up food so that you could enjoy it over a longer period of time. Right, and also share amongst family and community as well. Um, definitely larger families. <clears throat> Okay, let me double check the chat. Um, is there, does anyone else have any questions or flavor profiles you'd like to talk about? Shayla, I'm curious if you can share a little bit more about your work and about how you kind of came to do this work and how it connects to generations past kind of going back into the time period that this exhibit explores. I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about your story. Right, so um, I came about to cooking and instructor position at the library, um, originally through volunteering. <laughs> back in 2017, I attended a culinary program that they had and I was able to volunteer. I liked what I saw. Um, I love the mission statement. And then a few months later, it was an organization based out of New York called Just Food. And Just Food is a, gra a grassroots organization. And one of the components is their community chef program, which it connects everyday people um, through this cohort training of how to, how to connect to all communities, but especially uh, the lower socioeconomical communities, the black and brown communities, and ones that um, face and deal with food apartheid. So when I saw that the Philadelphia Free Library was offering the training course, it was my birthday weekend. I was like, this is it. <laughs> and I applied, I signed up, I got accepted. And that was back in 2017. Um, my background is originally just in early child education. So I was able to um, start co-teaching with uh, Shana Mamar and the rest of the lovely Nourishing Literacy team. And I taught with them for about a year. And then I came across an opening for the Edible Alphabet program, which is one of the staple programs at the library that connects ESL um, learners and newly welcomed immigrants that are practicing English, and it was the interconnection of English literacy and culinary literacy and cooking. So I was like, oh, this is right up my alley. It's a literal marriage of education and culinary. And uh, 2017, I created my own personal chef business along with um, small catering, Shayla Savor, and here I am. 
Thanks so much, Shayla. We might, we might ask you to tell a little bit more of your story, especially in terms of like how your Nana inspires you and everything. But in the meantime, there's another great question in the chat. Um, Wait, great. Curious about pickling fruits. Pickling so maybe fruits. things that we normally would eat sweet, like what would work in a more of a savory brine? Mm, I'm thinking I would like to see like a honey crisp apple. Uh, maybe a boss pear, sort of reversed, like a instead of a sweetened compote, more like on the savory side. I would see want to see how those would taste pickles, along with radishes, eggs. Um, I would want to taste actually collard greens. I know I use mustard greens tonight, but I would want to see how a collard green would break down. Um, let me think, what else? I've been found recipes where there were pickling of carrots, um, the tops as well, they're edible, sweet potato leaves. Um, I guess it would just be your flavor component. I'm actually allergic to peaches, so I won't be pickling peaches, but it could work. Yeah, I think if but there's a lot of people that can't handle peaches, even just the fuzz on them, but I yeah. think plums could work. Any sort of fruit that can kind of shape a little yeah. bit, great, mm -hmm. could work. Um, I love the idea of pears. That sounds amazing. Olives. I'm not an olive fan, but they can work as well. Um, celery. Watermelon rinds work as well. As long oh, as and someone just added yeah. the idea of figs. That's something I've never had, but that sounds fantastic. Oh yeah, sweet, naturally sweet in seasons. And then like the salt and the vinegar, I could definitely see that. So while we're waiting for more questions or comments to come in the chat, and I love what everyone's been sharing, um, including Asha shares, that's a beautiful story. And I love the inherent altruism and volunteerism, which I think for those of you that are joining us from Philadelphia or cities like it, that is a recurring theme here in Philadelphia. So many people are working within their communities and for their communities and making so much, uh, sometimes with so little. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask if you could share more about other sort of like culinary inspiration that you have from your family, other folks that have used food to express themselves over the generations. Right. Well, I'm definitely inspired by my uh, culinary mentor, which is my godmother, Chef Melba Wilson. Um, she's the president of the National Hospitality Alliance in New York City, and she's also the owner of Melba's restaurant in Harlem. So, um, and then her mentor, along with my great aunt, which would be Sylvia Woods of Sylvia's 125th Street, also known as the queen of soul food. <laughs> so um, working with her as well, um, inspired me over three years ago before just for me, <laughs> just, just before like all this other stuff came into place and by other stuff, um, attending the library just on, hey, I want to check this library out because I've heard it has this wonderful state-of-the-art culinary <laughs> literacy center, which I've never, I think we're the only one. I've never heard of any other library that has a culinary literacy center. I think it's either maybe Sweden or Denmark, I believe. Susanna, correct me if I'm wrong or right. Um, just wanting to be of service to the community, feeling like this was my calling so much that um, <laughs> I was employed as an educator full time. And I was like, ah, I got the culinary bug. I think I'm a good cook. Let's test this out. And I literally have been following the calling ever since. So I feel like if you step out on a little bit of faith, God will keep guiding you, you know, guiding your footsteps where you need to be. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yes, they you. love hearing about libraries having these learning kitchens. It's been really wonderful to be a part of that project because one thing that we've seen is that 
with the free library kind of leading the charge with that work, there's been a number of other libraries that have been inspired to do similar projects that are responsive to their own communities. And so there are other teaching kitchen in library spaces now. And there was, when we first opened a space in Spain that took a similar approach. Um, so it's been really fun and just ways in which food as a connector, we see as sort of like a universal theme. Um, I wanted to share too, I know that now you've kind of turned a corner in terms of also offering your skills as a mentor. Could you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing to mentor young chefs who are coming up? Yes. Um, so the height of quarantine, I had all this free time and I was like, hmm. <laughs> um, I saw a posting on social media and it was just like, hey, we're looking for mentors through um, Culinary uh, Careers in America through the CCAT program. It was a Philadelphia chapter and I was just like, well, huh. I need to give back in a way of supporting an up and coming woman chef you know, that was um, Black, and I got introduced to my wonderful mentee as of March, and we've been building ever since. <laughs> um, also being a part of this wonderful organization called Just Call Me Chef out of Baltimore, founded by Chef Katina Smith, and that was another call to action uh, through social media a year and a, almost two years ago, and one thing I loved is because it was an organization that really emphasized it was really structured and based off of sisterhood and camaraderie and just the need to have oneness when it came to black women leading within the food industry and the hospitality and restaurant industry so um, I'm excited to become um, be a member of Just Call Me Chef Philadelphia and continuing to support and shape young minds. <laughs> That's an amazing story. And I think you're, you're in great company in terms of people who have been building their work, the shoulders of giants, and then in turn, you get to give back in this way. So that's a beautiful story. I know we're getting close to the seven o'clock hour. We're happy to take any other questions that might come up in the chat. And then I also just wanted to share in the chat the link to our exhibitions. And right now, the newest exhibition that we have, of course, is the exhibition that this um, program is inspired by, For the Greatest Number, The New Deal Revisited. And the exhibition can be seen in person at Parkway Central, 1901 Vine Street here in Philadelphia. It's located on the third floor in the Dietrich Gallery. We are open whenever the public library at 1901 Vine is open. So currently the hours are nine to five, Monday through Friday. And we would love to have you come and visit this exhibit. We have original materials from our special collections as well as our research collections, our research departments. And they're just amazing materials that you get to see in person, everything from photographs to posters, to pamphlets, to puppets to artwork, really just phenomenal, phenomenal material that tells this amazing story of people here in Philadelphia who were working in community to serve their community members. Um, and there's some really interesting parallels. And I think Chef Shayla kind of shared that this evening in terms of finding ourselves in a similar place today and really looking to see what's needed, what, what do people need in the here and now to really feel supported and feel like their amazing skill sets are appreciated. Um, and we're just so grateful to be able to work with Chef Shayla and to continue this partnership. Um, and so we look forward to having you visit for the greatest number. If you can't come in person, Again, you can go to freelibrary.org backslash for the greatest number or greatest number rather. And you can engage with our online materials which include podcasts. We have a playlist, a music playlist put together by our amazing staff at the music department. And then we also have in-person as well as virtual programs like this one 
through the end of the year into um, early next year, this this show will be open until early February. So we just can't wait to continue to engage with you. Check out freelibrary.org backslash exhibitions or freelibrary.org backslash greatest number and follow along. And then for those of you that are interested in our cookbook collection, if you go to freelibrary.org and you go to the catalog, you can see all of this amazing material that we have that can uh, use some of the recipes that Chef Shayla put together today as a launching off point for you to see what you want to create in your own kitchen. So thank you so much, Shayla. This was so fun. Thank you. I love having, having you. Me. I love being here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have a beautiful evening, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.